when I fail to record, which has happened once. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So my name's Sue. As I said, it's really informal. I'm going to uh, put the mic so you can see. <laughs> so I'm here. Um, this is my website. So I basically help people. And there's one more person trying to jump in. So I help people to... Um, With me? Yeah. Oh, nice. Right, um, I help people ultimately to either get a job or to get clients. So that's my background. Um, we use LinkedIn to be able to do that, which is great because of the situation that we're currently in at the moment. So you, it allows you to keep safe. So today's session is all to do with how you can start, you know, well, what you need to be thinking about in terms of building the like, know, and trust factor. And I, I think I said in the message that it's probably the smartest career move that you can make. And I do believe that, okay? Um, the reason why people don't invest in this is that I think that we only do things when there's a pain attached, okay? <laughs> and I think at the moment there's a big pain, yeah? <laughs> so, you know, the, so what I'm trying to say to you is that I look at what I talk about, I kind of look at it as career management. My background is actually um, as a global career coach. So um, I'll be very honest, if you're from the UK, you probably recognize that I'm from Liverpool and then I moved to London. Um, but when I moved to London, what I recognized is that, dear God, I've got a problem here. People don't know me, they've never heard of me. And um, what I hadn't realized, but and what I have been doing without realizing is that I had actually been building my name, my reputation years before, which went, which meant that when I did move to London, it was, it was actually easier for me to get hired. I'll, I'll be very honest. Okay. So this is kind of, I'm, I'm kind of looking, I'm going to explain my background to you. And I think this is important because if you're able to build the like, no, and trust factor, it actually makes it easier for people to hire you. And that's why it's the smartest career move in, in, in very much in a sentence. Okay, so ultimately, I'm saying to you, you need to be thinking about building the like, known trust factor. Like me and they, 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 they like you as a person. People aren't gonna um, work with you if they don't feel that what you do or they don't like you. Let's put it like that. They just don't like you. They're not gonna work with you. They need to trust you as well, yeah? They need to know that what you're saying or what you're doing um, is, is correct, yeah? That your advice is, is, is gonna be um, useful, but they also need to know you, which is down to the visibility element. So the problem that most people have, and they don't realize that, they, that this is a problem, is that most people are good within four walls of the company that they work in. Think about what I'm saying for a second there because it's really important. You are good within the four walls. So you normally go into a job, I would imagine, and you do a great job within that company. The problem is, is that that reputation that you've developed is good within that company only. And yeah, you, what tends to happen is that you build, you work in other companies, you build your reputation and then you build your own little network, okay? And so you use your network to help you to get jobs or clients. That's fantastic. But sometimes the point that I'm trying to say is that your, your network can't help you anymore. At some point there will become a, you know, a, a stopping point where the network can't deliver what you want them to deliver. And that could be clients, that could be that key role that you're looking for, whatever that is. So, what I'm saying is that you really now, not particularly now, you need to be more proactive. And um, I agree with Boris in one sense. This is going to be the new normal. Yeah, the new normal is 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 navigating this new landscape. Um, so you need to be visible. And I think that's the big message that I'm going to really talk to you today is is your visibility. So if I go back to my own story, is when I moved from Liverpool, I moved to London. I hadn't realized, but I've been doing a lot of 
um, promote it, kind of a lot of um, just telling people my opinions on, on career related matters. Okay, I, I've been very visible within the career space. And because of that, when I did move to London, I was able to get uh, negotiate a four day week. I was able to negotiate a really good um, you know, salary and I was actually working and um, as part of that role, I was actually going into the cabinet office talking about careers. But this is the funny thing. What I quickly realized is that I didn't actually enjoy the role. <laughs> so on paper, this is quite hilarious. So for a career coach, that is quite funny, is that I didn't actually like it. I just didn't like this, what I was doing. I ultimately wanted to start working for myself. And so I can remember literally kind of very confused at that moment in time. And I wrote, so I can remember not sleeping because I thought, how ironic, I'm a career coach that doesn't like her own job. Yeah, that is a bit strange. So I remember writing a note to my partner at the time, who's now my husband, um, when I wasn't sleeping, and I wrote in this note saying, please, please, please let me quit my job. <laughs> and we just moved in together. <laughs> <laughs> so that was why I was thinking oh I don't know if he's gonna think that I'm trying to pull a fast one here because I'm from Liverpool <laughs> so, well, I can I can make that joke well the point is it put me in a really uncomfortable position but I did find it quite amusing in some senses and he was incredibly sweet okay it's probably the reason why he became a husband so he said quit your job on Monday <laughs> Yeah, you're going to leave that job. And on Saturday, he said, we will go. Or on that day, I told him, he said, we'll, we will go and celebrate you having no job <laughs> with a cocktail. So he took me out for a drink. Okay. And that was how I started doing what I'm doing now. But I want to be very honest with people. I wasn't very good at it. Okay. I was good at the career side to it. Don't get me wrong. But what I wasn't very good at was actually getting clients which is a bloody problem if you want to work for yourself. So what I'm really going to be telling you about is what I'd wished I'd known, okay? Um, and I'm going to be very honest with you and I'm going to share with you how difficult it was for me at that time, okay? Because I, had, I, I decided, okay, this is what I want to do and I, and I was, you know, really determined to make it happen. So there, there I was, I can remember giving him my notice. And then I can remember thinking, oh my God, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what to do. And I can remember leaving that job after I'd said, I'm, I'm, I'm off now. And I actually went to the nail salon and I don't even go to the nail salon. And I got my nails done. And I was, I must have been really confused because I was like, I don't even know what, 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 have, what have I done? What am I going to do? But I've made that decision. But anyway, to, to change the scenario, it does have a positive scenario. And in the end, what I, what I did figure, I did figure it out. I did figure, and this is the bit that I'd like you to know, is that when you work for yourself, you need to understand sales. Okay? You, you basically are promoting yourself 24-7. And you need to recognize that if you want to work for yourself, you actually also need to be willing to sell as well and if you're not able to do that then you really kind of need to be thinking about a full-time job okay because part of this is you are selling yourself but i would argue even if you're going for a full-time job you still need to sell yourself at an interview okay but i do agree that when you're working for yourself it, it's it's got to be part of your system so I was determined and I failed at this, okay? I failed really badly, but I was determined that I did want to work for myself. And I can remember it was Christmas and I can remember my, yeah, he wasn't happy about this, but I remember going, I haven't figured this out yet. And I can remember actually having to look at claiming job seekers benefit because it was that desperate, yeah? And, um, and then I was, and then I actually had to go back to work. <laughs> True story. I had to actually go and find, um, to get some money into, into, into the pot again. Okay. It just wasn't working. 
But then again, I did that part time and I was like so determined I was not going to give up on this and I didn't. I'm kind of like a dog with a bone. So my lessons are you need to have a system, a sales funnel. I'm going to call it a sales funnel. It does not need to be LinkedIn, but it does need to be something of where you are looking and using. OK, um, and you're basically. Um, Sorry, I'm just going to let one other person in. You need to be thinking this as, as you need to have a sales funnel. That's my uh, biggest thing that I can say. You need to be recognized. Whatever you use, you need to be conscious that if you want clients and you want a consistent, you want consistency in getting clients, then you need to move away from ad hoc. Most people are ad hoc. They do not have a system. So the first question you know that you can answer, ask yourself is, do I actually have a system that I can utilize now in order to attract clients? Okay. And if you don't have a system or you're using a system which you can't utilize, like, I don't know, networking meetings. Yeah. Then that's not going to work for you at this moment in time. Yeah. Um, or you put yourself in danger if you decide to go and do that, you know, if you're at risk, for example. So you need to be thinking about, okay, if I do this, uh, you need to be thinking about, okay, what is my marketing mechanism? What am I going to be using to help me to attract a consistent, uh, consistent clients? And if you don't have this, what happens, and I think that it must be happening to some of you here because you wouldn't be on the call, is that you will, you will recognize that you will have clients, and I call this feast and famine. Okay, so you'll get clients, get really busy with those clients, and then uh, you're so busy with those clients that you don't have any time to actually market yourself to the next group of people that you need to be thinking about. Okay, so I don't mind whatever mechanism that you use, as long as you're using something. Yeah, so, to, to, so I use LinkedIn. Uh, other people might be using, for example, I don't know, networking meetings. Some people might be using speaking events to attract clients. Whatever you do, it just needs to be able, you're, you, sh you need to be saying, can I do this now? And you need to do it consistently. The mistake that everybody makes though, are you ready for this? Because this is quite interesting. The mistake that people make is that they try and do too many of those things. Yeah. Okay, so you, what you go to yourself is, I'm going to go on Facebook, I'm going to go on Twitter, I'm going to go on LinkedIn, I'm going to go to the, meet, the networking meeting, and then it, it doesn't really work. Okay, and that's because you've got too many shiny objects. And I'm going to say to you, pick your one thing, make sure your people are on the one thing. And when I say your people, it means that... Um, the people that can hire you. So if, you know, I'm not going to really go on Instagram, okay? I find it really works for me if I stay on LinkedIn and the, because I know the, the types of people I'm looking for are going to be using LinkedIn, okay? So pick your thing where you know people are on and you know what you can, you can actually do at this moment in time, okay? Would be, would be my message. And then be consistent with that as well, okay? So two things that people do is that they, they are very ad hoc in what they do. They go, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, or I'm doing this. But then, you know, I do a little bit here, a little bit there, and there's no real consistency. And so you're looking at using LinkedIn, or you're looking at whatever marketing method that you're, you're looking at, it needs to be consistent and it needs to be done where it attracts people and your goal, believe it or not, your goal is to get into conversations with those people. That's why people confuse marketing, okay? A blog by itself doesn't get you conversations, okay? Um, it's part of the process but it won't actually get you conversations with people. So that's why when I help people to understand, okay, if you want to start building the like, no trust factor, you need to have a sales funnel that is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle piece. And the jigsaw puzzle piece needs to be um, joined together 
and it needs to be kind of okay. So I, I sometimes say, so people will say to me, yeah, I post on LinkedIn, doesn't lead anywhere. And it won't, okay? I'm not saying don't do it, by the way. I'm just saying that you need to have other pieces of the puzzle in, in conjunction with that, with that blogging piece, okay? Another thing that people do is they will, they create the blog post, and then what normally happens is um, they, they, it leads nowhere. There's no what I call a clear call to action. So a call to action is where you are, where you are telling people what you would like them to do next. And what you would like them to do next is have a conversation with you because you know realistically that by having the conversation, that's the only way that you will get hired. Okay, so LinkedIn works very, very well if you are offering a premium service. So that could be your, you, you're offering your services to, um, to certain organizations or to individuals. It doesn't work very well if you are trying to sell a low volume product like a book, for example. So let me just be clear on that. Is anybody, I know uh, David's kind of like a consultant, is anybody willing to share? You would need to unmute yourself or type into the chat box. But is anybody willing to share what you do? I'm gonna put people on the spot. So, no, nobody wants to share. You would need to unmute if you wanna tell me or type into the chat box. Okay, we'll accept. <laughs> and then no one wants to share today. Okay, so, I think that if you are um, if you are offering a high value service, LinkedIn works really well. If it's a low volume service, like for example a book or something, it's not going to work very well at all. Okay, that's why I said that you need to be making sure that whatever whatever system that you're using or whatever marketing element focuses on that bit. So my argument is, if you want to start building the like, know, and trust factor. You need to have a system. This is what I wished somebody had told me when I first started doing what I was doing, yeah? I was desperate for somebody just to say to me, just do these things. And, and, and my advice is, is that I'm gonna tell you those things, I'm not gonna keep it a secret. And then I'm also gonna say the same thing is what I've learned is that you need to be consistent doing those things, okay? So I am going to, I'm going to give you the building blocks. I'm actually going to, oh, I actually was there. One second. I was actually on my website and I've got these building blocks on my website and it helps me to not think about it and just uh, look at those things there. And we can work through those step-by-step -step things that you want to be thinking about. Okay. And that's, that's what I would say that you, you ultimately need to be thinking about. Um, just bear with me for one second. Okay. And we will look at these nine steps. And because if you do these nine steps, it ultimately builds the like and trust factor, but it also leads to sales because that's ultimately what you're trying to do. You're, you're trying to lead it to uh, more clients, okay? So let me go through these steps with you because I think this is going to be pretty useful. Right, step one is understanding what your income goals are. It might sound very obvious, but we need to we need to put that into place. So if you understand, okay, I need to be earning this amount of money, then you know, for example, you can work, you can start re-engineering the process and working and understanding what you could be charging. Yeah. And because really that if, if you are, uh, you know, self-employed, a consultant, whatever, generally you are, you, you tend to be looking at this because you want the business to do something or you, you're looking at it because you want to create something or you want a certain lifestyle from this. So you need to understand exactly what it is that you're looking to achieve. So get very clear on that. Do you want three months out of the year off? You know, um, do you want to be able to earn a certain salary? What is it that you or you're looking for for world domination? Yeah, you need to be thinking about okay, what is it that I'm, I'm actually looking to achieve here? Because 
this is really important. Now, these nine steps are gonna be very much talking to you via LinkedIn, okay? And remember I said to you that you can pick anything in and that, and that is me being very truthful. All I would say to you is that whatever you pick, make sure your audience is there, but also be consistent with it and become the expert in that thing that you use. That's my advice. You don't need to do everything. Okay, you know that's quite shocking, yeah? You don't need to be a master of everything. You just need to know how to use that one thing very well. And if you spend more of your time on that one thing, it, it's likely to lead to results because when you spread yourself very thinly, it's very difficult to master uh, that, you know, so many things at once, okay? So my best advice to you is pick whatever it is that you want to use. Obviously for me and for what I do, I'm gonna be talking about LinkedIn because that's what I do. So one of the things that you need to be thinking about is your LinkedIn profile, because if you're gonna use LinkedIn, you need to be looking at LinkedIn as kind of your calling card. And believe it or not, you don't actually, in my opinion, you don't need to have a website. If you've got one, that's fantastic. Um, but I think sometimes when people start going down this road, they think, oh, I've got to have a website, but actually you've still got an issue how do you get people to your website? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? So you need to be thinking about, okay, we could potentially use LinkedIn as the mini website about you in some senses. If you've got a website, that's great. We can also direct, direct, you know, get people to also look at that. Um, but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop conversations. So if I said to you, you know, people like to make marketing incredibly complicated. But if you want me to put it very simply, you know, the more conversations that you have, the more wealthy you will be, yeah? And they obviously need to be with the right people, but that's ultimately what you want to be striving for. And most people don't recognize that's, that's what a LinkedIn profile should be about, particularly, you know, if you are, you know, looking for clients, okay? More conversations, the more wealthy that you will be. That's the key message that you need to do. So if I'm working with a client or my team is working with you, we are making sure that everything that we do leads to a conversation, okay? Including the LinkedIn profile. So let me come back to that LinkedIn profile for you. Most people don't realize that actually they've got a crap and I will won't use that word crap <laughs> because it's true, rubbish. They realize that what they've got, or they don't realize what they've got is not very good. And I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm gonna say that. I come from the background, as I said to you before, is I'm a career coach. And I have seen thousands of LinkedIn profiles. And there's very few that I think, wow, that's really good. And the reason why is because you are talking about you. I know that's quite hilarious, isn't it? You're talking about yourself. That's what I'm meant to do, you say, but actually you're not because your LinkedIn profile is not serving you, it's serving your clients and really it should be everything about them. Okay, so the, what I see and what I feel is that people, when they create their resume or their CV or their LinkedIn profile, you've got it all wrong. Yeah, you are basically just telling me everything that you've done. And really a LinkedIn profile CV is, is, is not really about that. It's about you need to work out your USP, your unique selling points, and why that matters to the people who, um, who are going to hire you, okay? So what I mean by that is that we only ever get hired because you have a problem. If, if, if a customer or a client doesn't have a problem, you will not get hired. Yeah. So what you need to be thinking about is everything needs to be set up in that kind of mindset. That's my opinion. Okay. So your LinkedIn profile, if you said to me, okay, what, you know, the minimum requirements, then I would say, okay, the LinkedIn profile, if you are asked for your resume or CV, a lot of companies still ask for that, even if you're a consultant, then yes, that needs to be the best that it can be. And particularly if you've got, a, if you charge a very high day rate, okay? 
And again, people have got, you know, the CV that they've created for themselves. It's not particularly very good. They think it's very good, but often it's not. And I'll give you an example of what that means. A lot of people may have used their CV, for example, or their resume, um, but it's backed up by their network. Their network has to say, you want to check this guy out or this girl out. Uh, here's a copy of the CV, which means that somebody's had to vouch for you and your resume or CV by itself couldn't tell that story. <laughs> yeah. So if you find, mm, that's how I've done it in the past. And when I've done it without somebody's actually helping and nudging, then there could be a problem there with that. Okay. So again, you need to be the, the higher the day rate or the, the more you charge, these are, this is, you know, the LinkedIn profile and, and the resume if it's required. This is the way people will evaluate you. Make no mistake about it. That's how they evaluate you because that's what they can only go on. Yeah. So these need to be incredibly high quality and incredibly bespoke. Yeah. And it needs to, it needs to have a, a, a very clear narrative of what you do for people. And that's what I do for, for, for that. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing for a long time. Okay. So that's why to me, the LinkedIn profile is kind of like the foundations to the house. Yeah, get those wrong, the, ha the house is going to go down. Yeah, they need to be high quality. If they're not, it's, it's not going to lead to the conversations that we just talked about. And that's really important. Another way that we can look at this, will, will people be willing to share this? You just need to be, let me have a little look. Okay, can people go to uh, their LinkedIn profile for me? If you can go to your LinkedIn profile, I'm going to just check to see if I can get mine up. And this is a great KPI. This is why I mention it. We want to find your KPI. Why is it not letting me do that? One sec. So one of the things that you would, I can actually describe this already, but you need to go to LinkedIn. If you can go to LinkedIn, I'm going to stop sharing the screen so you can maybe use your own computer. Okay. Go to LinkedIn for me and go to, I'm just trying to find my LinkedIn profile. And if you go to the home button on your LinkedIn profile screen, and then you click on home, and then on the left hand side of the screen, there will be a picture of you and the number of people who viewed your profile. I would ask that you look at what that it's what it says. Okay, so that figure is normally, well, I don't know, it's normally um, maybe in a, could be anything from 100 or below. You need to work that out. So mine's, mine's just starting to um, load. Okay. Is anybody willing to share in the chat box or shout out what your figure is? Because I think this is an important KPI. This is me kind of not just giving you, this is me giving you real direction to work out, is your LinkedIn profile any good? Because for most people, it's not. So for a LinkedIn profile to be fit for purpose, it needs to be seen. And it needs to have great content. So just to, to clarify, my LinkedIn views is 1,650. And that is, by the way, that statistic is over 90 days. Well done, somebody sharing. Well done, 181. Well done, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else wants to do that? Okay. So, Mine is 428, Susan. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so what you need to be thinking about is the more that you... Uh, get visibility to your profile and it needs to be the right people yeah and I'm gonna just like I'm, just, I'm not talking rocket science here I'm just gonna keep it very simplistic all we're really doing is we want people after we've created a really decent LinkedIn profile we want people to see that profile but we want the right people to see that profile so the right people are normally um, the people that can hire you or they could be gatekeepers for you. Sometimes that could be recruiters, for example. 
okay? Um, it could be your own network. They could also be gatekeepers as well. So sometimes it's really useful to, to kind of look at that and go, okay, if I can increase my visibility, yeah, and I increase it with the right people, then really and truly what you're starting to do is, is, is become more visible, which leads to naturally more conversations. And that's really what you need to be thinking about. Okay, you need to be thinking about it in that way. Yeah, and once you start thinking of it in that way, you start becoming very clear. Have what, I, what I've got now, is it good enough? Yeah, so I would say, you know, be thinking about what we've just talked about there. So the LinkedIn profile, you can actually treat it as like the mini website and then you can get visibility to those people. And I will say to you, it won't work with what you're currently doing now, okay? If you want it to work, you need to, uh, you know, people say, oh, I can just add some keywords in it. Does mine have keywords in it? No, okay? <laughs> so that's not, gonna, that, that's not gonna immediately get you more visibility. It needs to be very strategic, and, and, and I will explain what and how you would do that in a second. So step three is creating, sometimes, yeah, it is. It's sometimes you might have publicity or, or you might have marketing collateral. You might not even realize that you've got it already. So for example, a bio is marketing collateral. Um, a blog that you've created is marketing collateral. Anything that you've got already that you're, that you're kind of using or you could use, that's what I mean by that element which is step three okay and all i'm really saying and the website by the way that's marketing collateral <laughs> yeah so again a lot of people don't recognize what they've actually got they spend like thousands and thousands of pounds on a on a website and they don't again realize what is it that i'm trying to achieve with the website and i'm going to tell you what you should be thinking of achieving you need to be getting emails. That's what you should be tracking because most people will go to your website or people will go to your website, but most people won't go back to your website. So you need to be looking at this very strategically. By the way, I'm not saying to you, let me make this very clear, I'm not saying to you that you need to have a website to get clients. That's not true. But if you've got one, then you want to look at using it and making sure that it's fit for purpose. So fit for purpose is my website should be at least getting me email addresses from the people that could potentially hire me. And in order to do this, you need to be thinking about, okay, what can I do that would allow people or, 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 or get more people to give me their email? Okay, saying that you've got a newsletter is not gonna is not gonna win these days. Okay, so it needs to be well thought out. And again, this is the things that we help clients with. Step four is understanding your audience. Yeah. So you know what we've recognised is that if we are gonna want, if we want more clients, we also need to be thinking about well, who are they? Yeah. How do we start? touch and base with them. So the first thing that we need to be thinking about, and by the way, we do this all for you. Your job is literally to reply to messages, which makes people very happy because this is a huge admin task. We're not just talking about sending a hundred messages out. We're talking about sending a lot of messages out. Okay. Now I'll explain in a second, but the first thing that we're looking at is who is it that we want to target? Yeah. So again, it could be those gatekeepers I mentioned, it could be the end user, your future boss. Who is it that I should be reaching out? You know, what countries could I be targeting? Okay, because ultimately LinkedIn is a huge database. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is, is, is exploit that database and start kind of getting in contact with the right people for you. And it needs to be where it's you know, if you want more conversations, then yes, you need to be reaching out individually to those people. This is not about, oh, I've, I've posted a little post on LinkedIn. Yeah, wow, look, look at me, I've done this. That's part of the process, 
But that by itself is not going to get you clients. You do need to reach out to people as well. Okay. We can get clients chasing you and, and that is exactly what I offer people. But initially when you're starting to do this, you need to be really, you know, okay. They, 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 you know, outside the four walls that, you know, I've been working in, maybe people don't know who I am. Maybe you recognize that actually I need to be connecting with more people and therefore they need to, they, they need to start knowing about what I do. Okay. So if that's the case, then we need to be reaching out to people that you're not connected with. And we need to also be thinking about, okay, what's the messaging that we're going to do there. So that's why we also do the messaging scripts for you. Um, and um, my thing about messaging is that I don't like it when we sell. Okay, so um, I mean, you can be blunt to certain people like recruiters, you know, we can be very blunt, we can say to people, okay, um, you know, I am looking for this type of role. Yeah, and we can also we can like this. And this is what we do for clients as well, is that we actually send them a copy of your, your resume or your CV for them okay as part of that package if you want to just target those people yeah so we think about okay what is our messaging it's likely to be different depending on who we're messaging yeah you're not going to say the same message to a recruiter as you would to the end user for example or your future boss so what we're really trying to do is think about okay what is the system that we're going to be doing? What is the messaging? And making sure that it's not too salesy. Okay, yes, we do need to sell at some point, but it shouldn't be on that first message. Yeah, so my strategy is really to look at what can we do that gains engagement. And I'm pretty good at doing that, if I'm, if I'm honest, okay? Um, and I've started to do um, my own system in that, in that way, okay? I, I truly believe that you know, we want to try and look at how we can add value rather than just sell, sell, sell. So um, again, there's not just me on the team. We've got campaign managers that will run a campaign for you. We've also got uh, professional proofreaders, copywriters. They're also part of this. And so, you know, Annie, Carrie, they're the, they're the ladies that are very good at, you know, uh, the content side of things and being able to help drive the, the right message, the right narrative to, your, to the audience that you want to target. Um, I mean, for me, I think it's very useful, yeah, which is step six, where, and, and it's, not, it's not useful for everybody, but it can be useful for some people to do it like this. So we also create a personalized booking system for you. So what that means is, is that we're trying to make it easy for the client to book in a conversation. And what shouldn't be happening is like, oh, you know, uh, this ping pong fire email. So sometimes it's really useful to have, um, okay, uh, someone's just saying that they've got to leave now and they're just letting me know, that's very sweet. It's really, um, it's really important that you, you think about, okay, do I need a booking system? And I'm going to give you some, some reasons why I think it, it's actually quite a good idea. So remember, I've been very honest with people. I said to you that I've made tons of mistakes. And one of the mistakes is that I wasn't, I was spending too much of my time with the wrong people, okay? And that meant that I was wasting, I must have wasted over 100 hours. So when I did my booking system, and again, this is what I can do for clients as well, is that sometimes it's actually useful for a number of reasons to have a questionnaire. Because a questionnaire can actually help us when we do have that conversation with the clients. Yeah, because we've got a better understanding of the problem that they've got. So we can, we, can, we can prep for that call. But the other reason is that actually you can, you can check from the questionnaire that you are actually not wasting your time. And that's, that's a powerful reason to have a, to have a questionnaire. Yeah, you don't want to do what I've done where I'm speaking to the wrong people. Well, maybe it's pretty obvious. Yeah, you don't need, and it, I'm not saying it needs to be 60 questions. It, it can be very simplistic. And we make it very easy for people to, to do this. Like it's, it's like, um, you know, a drop down menu yeah, type thing. 
or it's like A, B or C, yeah? We, we make it easy because we, we, we also recognize actually the, the questionnaire can be a barrier to actually get someone to have a conversation. So there's a, there's a fine line to how many questions that you should have as well. But we do that for people. So if you think, okay, and we would discuss that, would this be a good thing for you to do? Another reason why I think having a, question, uh, having a booking system is useful is because you can actually build your brand, your name before that call. And again, we do all the messaging Right. So what, what do I mean by that? I mean, very simply is that when you get somebody that books in, yeah, there's going to be a series of messages that go out to the client that uh, say you've got this call on this date, blah, blah, blah. That's what everybody does. Yeah. But we go one step further than this because what we recognize is actually this is a golden opportunity for us to say, OK, yeah, we've got, to, we've got to remind people because we do want them to turn up. But also in those messages or in those, the, those reminders that we send, this is an opportunity for us to also do more personal branding and also to let them know more about you. So again, our, you know, we would be looking at this as an opportunity to give them more insight in terms of how you can help them and that's why it's so important, you know, if we go back to step one again, you know, when we create your LinkedIn uh, profile, we're very, we start to become very clear who your audience is. And, the, and, and I'm saying, you know, that helps us obviously with the LinkedIn profile, but also, uh, sorry, the booking system, but also we can, we can take this further and we can go, okay, we could also start mentioning B and C now because we've got this, we've got this opportunity to let them know, hey, you know, these are some of the problems that I've solved for clients in the past type thing, yeah? So we're actually doing some personal branding before they have that initial conversation. So that's also quite a clever move. That's why I do like that. Okay, um, number step seven, by the way, is you get the person on the, com on the call uh, or you go to the office if you can. <laughs> so the next thing that you want to be thinking about is how can you close that deal quicker so it does actually result in, in a sale. So again, that's also what you need to be thinking about. Yeah, you don't want to be waiting six months for the purchase order. You want to look at ways that we can reduce this lead time. Yeah, because you've already put a lot of effort into this now. So again, that's something that I would say. If you're going to be creating a sales funnel, it's something that you should be also thinking about yourself. Um, step eight is the build, is the, the like, know, and trust factor, and you know, becoming known within your industry. And that's what I was talking about before. You know, people blog, yeah, but that's just one element of that 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 funnel by itself. I would say that unless you are blogging for over a year, you've built your audience, this is not gonna be a quick win. This is gonna take a lot of time. Okay, so it's something that you also wanna be thinking about. But again, this is something that we would do for you. So we, we create your blogs for you. We will create five blogs for you. And we also recognize something else, which most people don't, is that at some point, you can't keep the conversation going on LinkedIn, yeah, with those existing people that you've messaged. And by the way, I don't think I made this clear enough. When we do a LinkedIn campaign for you, we are messaging a lot of people, not just once, but we're mess we, we take our, you know, our mindset is, is that, you know, we're seeing ourselves as kind of like salespeople. Yeah, I'm not going to give up after the first message. Oh, they didn't reply, so they're not interested. What we will do is message those people at least three times for you, okay? Um, until kind of, you know, it drives, what we're trying to do is, is drive some kind of conversation. In addition to this, we also do what's called nice touches. So a nice touch is where we wish somebody a happy birthday or we would endorse people for you on your behalf, like 50 people per day, by the way. Again, this is a huge administration task. And I, I, I don't know a lot of people that want to do this, but this is what we do for clients. Um, 
we wish them happy anniversary, happy new job type thing, because most people go into the same type of role anyway. Um, so we, we are doing these things each day, okay? The great thing about the nice touches is that people reply back to these things because I'm going to be very truthful with you. The, the reason why people reply back is that there's actually an automated message on LinkedIn that says, it's actually got the message already, you know, um, thanks for endorsing me for, and it puts it in. Yeah. And I don't know if you've noticed that, but that does happen. And then all you need to do is press the send button because the message is already created. So what that means is there's a high volume of people that will actually reply back to you because they haven't actually wrote the message early. They just press the send button. Now this is how we catch them. <laughs> when people engage with you, we will reply back to them on your behalf. So what we tend to do is again, we can ask them a quick question and I'll give you an example of that. Or we will offer them something Okay, so I'm just going to talk about me, for example, what I do. You know, if somebody replies back to a message when I've said happy birthday to them, for example, I might say, oh, I'm glad that you had a great day. Um, you know, um, would you like a copy of my book? Yeah, um, I've got, and normally in brackets, I think I put something like, don't worry, I'm not asking you to pay for it. Um, and I mentioned the word Amazon, okay, um, that are on Amazon at the moment. Um, here's book one, here's book two, let me know which one that you'd like. That's a really nice way to uh, just let people know that, you know, I'm here and um, I'm, I'm not trying to sell to you, I'm actually looking at building a relationship. Another way that I could do this is I might say to people, you know, if they reply back to something, I might say something like, okay, quick question, thanks for that, or whatever. Uh, quick, um, now that I've got you, um, just wanted to ask you a quick question, which, you know, how long are you spending on LinkedIn, uh, either looking for clients or uh, looking for a job, question mark. Yeah, are you looking for a more sleeker approach? Yeah, so I can, I, I, can, I can spin between any of those types of things. And so what we do for you is that we would, we would work out what your message would be, okay? So, so don't think that it's just simply about sending three messages. We are looking at doing those three messages individually to one person plus what we call these nice touches as well. So 25, it depends on how big your, your LinkedIn connections are to be honest with you. So, you know, if you've got, um, it's up to 25 people per day. Yeah. So if you've got more than 25 people having a birthday, then you probably wouldn't, we wouldn't do all 25. But I think that you're not going to have everybody's birthday on that day anyway. So I think it's doable. But we do 50 endorsements per day and you do get a lot of people that will reply back. So that's a very clever move as well. And then step nine is really looking at what we've done looking at, and by the way, I should have mentioned this, and I'm sorry about that, that we are already doing that as we're doing a, a LinkedIn campaign for you. So you would have your own, um, you'd have your own LinkedIn campaign manager, and that LinkedIn campaign manager is making sure that, that you, the campaign that we're running is, is working for you, yeah? And what they're doing for you, and just to, to highlight how clever this all is, is that we are, not only um, messaging people, but you would have what's called a Google Sheet, similar to a, a, an Excel document. But the reason why, so it's, it works just the same way, but it's called a Google Sheet. And the reason why this is so good is that you get the responses in real time. So when somebody replies to you with the message that we've sent out, we do expect you to reply to those messages. I won't lie to you because you're the expert in what you do. But we make it very easy for you to do this because what we've recognized is that LinkedIn, the inbox, the way that it's designed becomes very chaotic when a lot of things are happening, okay? It, it, it becomes impossible to track and to know who you're targeting. So what we do on your behalf for you is we use the Google Sheet. Any messages automatically come into this document for you so you know, okay, in real time, that I need to be replying to whoever. On top of that, any new connections that you make, we also create you a, a connections list, 
which is clever. So this connections list has the, you know, the date that they connected with you, it has their job title, it has their URL to LinkedIn, and guess what? It has their email address as well. And that's, that's hugely valuable. So if we were running something like this, remember I said to you at the start of this, that we need to understand when to take that conversation off LinkedIn. So at some point, those emails become very important because we've just also helped you to build an email list. That's priceless, okay? Because remember what I said to you, you know, the only way that you're gonna get clients is if you've got, if you're able to communicate and have conversations with people. And what I've said to you is that, you know, LinkedIn is just a medium to get more conversations going. But I also said to you at some point, you can't keep on sending message after message after message after message. So you need to understand when to take that conversation off LinkedIn. And we do that for you as well. Okay, so this is really thorough. So we would take all your, we would have, we would work out your, you know, your connections. We'd be able to, um, to add, you know, uh, those connections to an email provider for you. We'd be able, remember I said to you that we've already created a blog post for you on your behalf. So we're able to take those blog posts and we're able to start messaging those people uh, via, you know, whatever email method that you want. So if you use MailChimp or Sendably, for example, we can do that for you. So everything is set up, yeah? And uh, we do a lot of those work, we do a lot of this work. Yeah, so I feel like I've talked you to death. I don't know if people have, have recognized that, it, that if you are wanting to move away from uh, this feast and famine type situation, you, you are gonna need to be thinking about, um, you are gonna need to be thinking about a system. And that's what most people don't have. They don't have a system. They are using the network. That's what most people do. Um, but at some point that, that network can dry up. And I can imagine with COVID-19, that could be what's happening. And so, and, and don't get me wrong, it's happening for everybody. But you need to look at this situation and go, okay, the world will need to adapt. Yeah, they're, they're, this, is, this is here, it is here at the moment. The world eventually will need to adapt to this new situation. I agree that we're taking, you know, I'm still shocked about what's happened. Um, and maybe some countries are, are further along that line than others. Um, for example, Germany or New Zealand. Yeah. Um, but you ultimately need to be thinking at some point, you know, you know, other countries, you know, you are, we're all going to be getting, we're all going to have to move forward in whatever situation that we're in. And the economy does need to start, you know, eventually going again. I, I believe that it needs to be done safely though. Yeah. I'm not saying that you should go in if there's no testing being done and stuff, but that's just my personal opinion. But it's how do we adapt and how are you going to start marketing yourself in this new, in this kind of new world? And because there's going to be a lot of, um, unemployment yeah you you are going to need to start thinking a little bit differently about how you do that i would say any questions oh that's nice and that's very quiet <laughs> you're more than welcome if if somebody wants to doesn't want to really speak in the group or yeah uh so sorry like uh, i've been on off and i didn't join again because i was in a web meeting for work i still work for more maybe at the point i'm still working but the issue is that like i did not work properly so i hope next time i don't know because sometimes i'll just say send email while i have people have to log in with their webex and uh, i didn't actually properly follow process. so my question is please would the information shared today be sent to the email or share with the email or Say that again, sorry, I missed it. Sorry, say that again. I didn't I didn't hear it. The question. I said, I'm sorry that like I've been in off and uh, considering that I logged in very late because of uh, I've Oh yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah there will be recording, so you will get that recording. So you'll see that, yeah. Yeah, my question was like 
the information shared today that I know I've mixed a lot, so there's still points. So yeah. The information shared today, is it possible that like that will be shared in the email for, for the participants or something to go through later on? I, I, I still don't, I don't get what you're saying. The okay. recording today will be sent out in an email. Okay, yeah, that was what I'm asking actually. Ah, uh, yeah, it will be sent out. I'm going to try and do it on Friday. So yeah, the recording, it always, um, I, I do like, I tell people at the start that I always record and uh, it will go on to, it will it get sent to people because some people often have the same questions, yeah? Um, okay. Yeah, not a problem. So all I was going to say is if somebody wants to reach out to me directly. Susan, I've got a quick question. Yeah, no yeah, problem. But the um, nine-step guide that you took us through, Yeah. is that on your website? I've just been on your website. It I is. Find... I tell you what I will send you. It is on my website. So you just go... Uh -huh. Good point. If you go to if you go to go to the the shop page and the freelancers, right? Yeah, consultants, or I'll just send you the direct link over. So I'll just send you actually. So I've gone into shop freelancers consultants, and I've yeah, got... and then you go to tools and templates. No, it's it's VIP. It's a VIP uh, rate, so you go to get clients chasing you. It's this one that you want to be going on. Let me just check back in. Uh, well, I'm just going to... Yeah, yeah. This. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in the chat box as well. We yeah. I uh, just, just wanted to say, um, thank. firstly, thank you for the tips and the guidance and the nine-step kind of framework. I, I, I do absolutely agree that, you know, a lot... And I know from my experience, you I have a system, but mm -hmm. the challenge with the system is is what you said, which is the consistency and be on top of it all the time. Yeah. And, and your bits, the bits that you, the value that you provide, and please tell me if right, is how it's the nitty gritty and the administrative stuff. Yeah, that's that's. I'll, I'm going to be so honest with you. At first, I taught this to people, figured out that nobody really wants to do it. Yeah. Mm. So then I went, okay, forget that, yeah? Um, what you really want and what I recognize eventually is that you're too busy. Mm -hmm. well, and, and it's right. You need, to be, you need to focus on the high-level stuff. The high-level stuff is, is, is the conversations with the key people, yep. not the admin-based work. This is highly administration, yeah? Um, and that's what I take over. I just do all the, you know, that's what we do. Yeah, that's our bit. That's our bit. But we create that messaging and that campaign for you in, in that way. Yeah, so killer question. How much will it cost? <laughs> Depends on what you want. And that's a vague answer and it sounds like a politician. Mm. But I will give you, it can cost from anything from 600 to over two grand. But then we could look at taking it you know, to a very, you know, if you wanted to do this, it's, it's a, it's a low cost, you know, because we've set everything up. Yeah. So if you wanted to do it regularly, so we would, you know, we would get this up and running. We would do two months for you. It depends on again, what you want to do, but there's, there's various different packages. Okay. I would say your first thing that you want to do is let's have a conversation. This is what I do for everybody is that I'm willing to have a conversation with people individually we look at your business and what you do, and yep. then we'd work out what you need from there. And that would be the fairest way. Sure. And I think I, I'd appreciate that discussion, Susan, um, because uh, uh, I, so I, I run a consultancy firm um, and I have had a number of clients in the past, but what I need is that smooth funnel of clients. Yeah. And in, particularly in the current climate, I need to, I've got this, there's a window of opportunity to start building that pipeline. And I need, uh, what I do need is the, the time and, well, the support to crank the wheel. Yeah, and we're very good. We like to create quick wins, I call it. So right. in the first, you know, our first session, we're looking at getting the LinkedIn profile completed for you. Yeah. And then, um, cause that's it, that's it. Like, and then, you know, once we, I won't lie to you, there is a little, there is some work that we ask. Okay. Not a lot, but we do ask because we can't do it without your help. Mm -hmm. because you're the expert in what you do. So 
we say, okay, the reality is, is that you've got to commit maybe to a couple of, you know, at least four sessions. It depends. It depends. I can't say that. It depends on the package that you get. Yeah. But if we were doing a LinkedIn profile, you need to commit to an hour's conversation with us. Yeah. You need to be willing to do a small piece of homework and that, let, that takes maybe 30 minutes of your time. Send that back within three working days. We get it back to you. Yeah. That's your first draft. It's unlimited revisions. And, but realistically, probably on the second go that it's, it's perfect. Yeah. And we then do it for you. We go into the LinkedIn profile and we do it. That's, that's the level that we go in. Yeah. I, I, my, my situation might be different to others, but I think my LinkedIn profile isn't too bad. But okay. then you might argue that it isn't. That's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the work that I would be looking for, and we can talk about this separately, yeah. is, is the conversion. It's about um, the targeting to that audience and getting them to talk to me and you doing the sweeteners, if you want to say. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, to, uh, to, to get them intrigued and get them that you really need to talk to this guy. Yeah. Okay then that's what I mean. That's why we need to have a conversation. Let's work out what it is that you actually need. And then we can personalize the stoke to what, what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. You've got, so, have you got my contact details? I've I, try, I tell you what, can you, I'm going to ask if you, yeah, you can. Could you send me the email? You can actually send it just to me. Not to everybody well, in the group. I don't, I don't you can email me if you've got a, uh, if I've sent you an email in the past, you can just email it. And then I've got mm. you. Ah, there you go. To everybody, you're brave. <laughs> well, happy. okay fantastic so what if i've copied that so what i will do is i will i will just send you a message mm -hmm. and then we can book in a call maybe uh next week if that works for you that's fine yeah fantastic and if anybody wants to do the same you probably got an email that i've sent to you um that says this session is happening or you might have got it from linkedin just find me and let me know hey uh, you want the same thing yeah and we can go from there. But that's any other questions? So just want to make sure. But yeah, yeah no, we'll definitely book something in. And from okay. my side, uh, thanks very much. It was very, very interesting. And I will uh, probably give you a shout. Might be in a, in a week or so. I'm just working on one or two things, but I uh, will make contact with you. Thanks. Susan. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, it's been lovely. This is my second one today. <laughs> so I'm actually in an Airbnb. You know why? Because having a two-year-old son doesn't work when you're at home. <laughs> so it's been lovely, okay? So hopefully, please do get in touch, David, okay? You know where I am if you need me. And Thank thanks you. again, and I will be in touch with you now, okay? Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
My God, isn't that tough? 